Hello everyone, I've got a little bit of a surprise for you uh, for this video. Now you remember that back in February, our analogs guru, James Acrill, had to have quite a big operation and uh, James has been out of action for several weeks and months, been unable to uh, bring us uh, any analogs due to the long recovery period that's been involved from this uh, very large operation that he had 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 to have but our analogs guru is back our analogs guru james acryl uh is back is back and is uh, starting to create a few analogs for us and he is going to be gradually easing himself in to uh creating the analogs over the next couple of months and he's going to be focusing on uh, winter 2020-21 preamble analogs. So the analogs that you're going to see in this video and also in a couple of videos that will be coming during July and August are not going to be forming part of the winter forecast. These are in addition to and just beginning to get things going. If you see what I mean, kind of like a preamble to the uh, to the winter updates that are going to be starting in uh, September. So these videos are going to be kept at YouTube. Initially, we're going to be releasing these for our channel members, and then the channel members will get to see these uh, in a couple of days in advance, and then we'll release them across YouTube, and uh, everybody uh, will be able to see them if they go to Gazweb's YouTube channel. These videos will not be embedded onto gazweb's.com at Winter Updates page because they are not going to form part of the, of the winter forecast, if you see what I mean. These are in addition to... Uh, we're really just ex experimenting to see whether at these very, very early stages we can start to pick out uh, any trends. So this is really, really experimental stuff. This is really pushing the boundaries and, uh, and we are really uh, experimenting uh, with this. And just to break uh, our analogs guru back in after such a big operation. And it's just so fantastic to see you back, James. I know you'll be watching this. And it's absolutely amazing to see you back uh, and starting to, on the road to uh, to full health. And we wish you all the best. We wish you uh, nothing but uh, but but uh, great things in the next uh, few uh, weeks and months and years as you're uh, recovery progresses uh, and if anybody can uh, wish James well in the comments that would be absolutely uh, fantastic James will uh, read the comments that uh, you're making uh, okay then so uh, as I say these are going to be YouTube exclusives and uh, and will be reasonable to channel members for a couple of days in advance everybody else but everybody will get to see these on the channel over the next couple uh, of months the first um, uh, thing that we're going to look at for these uh, winter preambles uh, is going to be precipitation so you remember that um, with the uh, summer forecast we looked at uh, summers following the top uh, driest maize uh, on uh, record um, and and uh, also uh, with these uh, autumn updates, well, the very first autumn update, again, was having a look at uh, autumns following the uh, very driest uh, maze on record. And that's what we're following on with uh, with this one. James has narrowed things down a little bit more, though. We've been looking uh, for, the, uh, for the summer forecast and for the uh, autumn update uh, at, uh, at maize with an England weather precipitation of 35 millimetres uh or less. Uh, James has looked at uh, maize with uh, a total England Wales precipitation of 25 millimetres or less. And we're looking at the winters that follow uh, those maize. So very, very, very interesting. Uh, right, so we're at the uh, England and Wales precipitation uh, page from the UK Met Office right now. Let's just scroll down. And uh, we see 2020, where 2020 came in in terms of England and Wales precipitation. It only had 10.2 uh, millimetres for May uh, 2020. The second driest May on record for England and Wales precipitation. Not quite the driest May on record, though. Because if we go all the way back into the 1800s, we do find one May that was drier. It's 1844, which had an England and Wales precipitation of 7.9 um, but only one May drier than May 2020. It was an exceptionally dry uh, month.
So for this uh, little winter preamble, we're going to be looking at winters following May, so of an England and Wales precipitation uh, during, a May, during the month of May of 25 millimetres or less. The first one is going to be winter 1836-1837. And uh, here we go. So this is following an exceptionally dry May in 1836. And this one, this winter, has above average heights blocking up to our north around Greenland. It has below average heights, low pressure across the west of Europe. Uh, and of course, it leaves us bringing in the wind from like a northeasterly direction. So uh, quite cool and quite unsettled, uh, probably quite cold for the winter of 1836-1837. We're driving in the wind from an easterly or northeasterly direction. So you could envisage that that was really quite a cold winter. The next winter is 1844-1845, and this one, again, with strong northern blocking in the northern latitudes, high pressure up towards Greenland and Iceland, low pressure over and to the south to the east country. Again, when you think we're driving in those east to northeast to the winds, so again, it looks like this would be a cold and wintry winter with winds in from the east. Our next winter following a May with uh, England Wales precipitation of 25 millimetres or less is the winter of 1876-1877. This one looks a lot milder. This one looks wet and mild with low pressure in over the top of the country and in come the westerly winds. So that's a mild, wet and windy winter in 1876-1877. Next, we have 1896-1897, uh, with low pressure to our south, some higher pressure up to the north. It looks like this could be a cooler winter, could be a cooler winter, maybe not overly cold and severe, but certainly it could be quite cool at times. You will think we're probably pulling in cold air from the north into that trough of low pressure. Our next winter is 1905-1906. Uh, so this one, very unsettled, wet and windy, low pressure is up to the north, high pressure is pulled out into the middle of the Atlantic, winds are in from the west, so that's a mild wet and windy w winter for 1905 and 1906. And then we have a long gap through to 1956-1957, so the next time we have uh, a May with an England Wales adaptation of less than 25 millimetres, is May 1956. The winter of 1956-1957 is overall quite mild, with low pressure coming in off the Atlantic and westerly winds. But it does have a cold spell during uh, December, and actually it was a white Christmas in uh, 1956. Uh, we have the winter of 1970-1971. This one also contains quite a famous white Christmas. High pressure up to the north, low pressure to the south. Winds in from the east. December uh, 1970 is quite cold. And as I say, there is a white Christmas uh, in 1970. Uh, but then the winter gets milder as we go through to January and February. Starting off a very long run of uh, mild winters really through the early and middle 1970s. It was a poor early to middle uh, decade, the 70s, for winters. Another pretty long gap then through to 1990-1991. Uh, uh, and yes, look at this. We get low pressure over to the west of the country, out to the west of the country. We get high pressure setting up over Scandinavia. And of course, that leads us bringing in easterly winds. And we know that this winter contains a very cold spell in uh, in February of 1991. does have quite a cold and wintry uh, outbreak during December, but the real cold weather for this winter is very much in the first half of February when uh, we pull in some bitterly cold air from the east and there's a lot of snow as well. We have to go on one winter, uh, Ben, and we come through to 1991-1992. Uh, this one is a very dull winter. It's very anticyclonic with high pressure just centred over the top of the country. Very, very little going on during this winter. It's one of the most boring and tedious winters uh, of my lifetime. Just stuck under the ridge day after day. Anticyclonic gloom, but generally quite mild. That was... A winter from hell, really. Uh, OK, let's put that together then. And this is how all December's combined are looking 
um, when uh, we have a May, England and Wales precipitation of 25 millimetres or less. So potentially quite a cold signal, would you believe, for December. It does tend to favour a Scandinavian high with low pressure out to the west. And winds tend to be favoured to be coming in from the east. So you could envisage that that uh, favours quite a cold uh, start to the winter, a cold December. Been long while since had one of those. Um, then we've got all well, January's combined following May, England and Wales of 25 millimetres or less, with above average heights sort of over and to the east of the country, below average heights to the west and to the southwest. Potentially still quite cool, but not not as much of an easterly influence really as we have in December. So this is like probably quite an anticyclonic and potentially quite chilly pattern, but probably not overly uh, cold. Uh, and then we'll revert to westerly for February. So this is how all February's combined are looking with uh, below average heights to the north and above average heights to the south. And so despite February 1991 being in this analog package, which was a very cold month, overall we favour westerly winds with this package of analogs and a relatively mild and Atlantic-driven type pattern for all February's combined. And then lastly, this is how all March is combined. Well, not quite March. Last year's got for winter analog, but um, this is how all Marches combined are looking. Mendel's like the colder potential comes back a little bit. Some higher heights begin to appear up towards Greenland, with the lower heights to the north to the west of Europe, and that leaves us doing something a little bit like that with the flow and with the jet stream. And so for those uh, marches, uh, you could well envisage that there's a bit of cold and wintry potential in there. And then this is indeed uh, lastly. So this is how all winters combined are looking uh, following a May England weather temptation of 25 millimetres or less. So for all winters combined, we tend to get higher pressure set up over Scandinavia, tend to get lower pressure out to west and to the southwest of the country, tends to favour bringing in something of an easterly flow. Although bear in mind, most of that is to December and then the winter gradually transitions milder through January and particularly February before possibly getting colder again in March. So December and March are the two months that have wintry potential. January and particularly February, probably rather milder. Uh, OK, I hope you've enjoyed that little winter 2020-21 preamble. If you did enjoy it, then please like the video. Make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel. There will be more of these coming over the next couple of months as we gradually start to build up towards uh, the winter updates. And, uh, and uh, yeah, tell us what you think in the comments and all of that good stuff. And uh, it'll be absolutely great if you can do that for us. Big, big thank you to James Ackman. It's so wonderful to have our analogs guru back. Of course, James is going to need some time to, um, you know, to uh, to ease himself in. But uh, but uh, our analogs guru is back, and uh, we will have more of these little winter 2020-21 preambles for you over the next couple of months. I hope you enjoyed the video, uh, and uh, yeah, so look out for more uh, over the next few weeks. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.